Here we'll look at the worm gear, which is this spiraling gear here that sits right on the axle. And we'll examine some of the interesting properties of the worm gear itself. So if I just draw out what this looks like, if this is an axle, and here I have a worm gear sitting on that, when we connect up a second gear into that worm gear, first thing to note is that it changes the direction uh, by 90 degrees. So the worm gear is along this axis. The gear that sits inside of it, the motion will turn 90 degrees. I have here an example of that. You can see the worm gear here in the inside connected up to a 24 tooth gear there. As I spin the worm gear, we see some very slow motion on the 24 tooth gear going in one direction or the other direction. One thing to note is that I actually cannot spin the top gear. So the worm gear actually only works in uh, one direction. One thing to note about this is that there's a very high gear ratio between these. One rotation of the worm gear moves one tooth on the gear. And that's true actually for any gear you use. So that means you can get actually pretty high gear ratios pretty quickly. So for instance, if we use an eight tooth, that results in a ratio of one to eight. If we're using a 24 tooth, as I just showed, that would be in a one to 24 ratio. And a 40 tooth would be one to 40. You can actually increase this even more by combining them together. So if I have a worm gear here connected up to the 40, we know that's a one to 40. If on that second axis, I stick a second worm gear and connect that up to say another 40, that's another one to 40 ratio. And if we do out that math, the one to 40 on the first one connected up along that same line with a 1 to 40 on the second results in a gear ratio of 1 to 1,600. That is, this final gear will turn once for 1,600 rotations of this input uh, worm gear. So a few things to note. First up is that it's one direction. As I said, you can't drive worm gears backwards. You can only drive them forward. The worm gear has to be driving the regular gear and not the other way around. Second, there's this neat device here, this yellow box in this case. They also make the same thing in a clear format so you can see what's actually happening inside that houses the worm gear and gear. This makes it easy for building systems. The downside is that the worm gear box is not in the 9797 kit. So if you're just using the 9797, you won't have access to that. Finally, there's an interesting way that you can use the worm gears in a way to turn rotational motion, namely the rotation along the axis of the axle into linear motion. And here what I have is a little rack to go with the gear and by putting it inside and then spinning the gear it actually results in the linear direction of me spinning on the back and the rack coming out the front. So by using a system like this, the gear rack we're able to turn uh, rotational motion into linear motion.